Hey, hi everybody. Hi. Here we are. Uh, our very first It's All About the Dog show. Um, I'm Steve. This is Rachel. Hi. And, uh, and welcome to Great Pyrenees Rescue of Missouri. So, with our first show ever. All right. So, we're going to start off by um, uh, saying hi, Maria. And, um, um, uh, and uh, we are also streaming to our friends in Colorado at peerrescue.org. Peer Rescue and Sanctuary. Okay, so I want to get started off here. Um, hi, Nancy. Um, so I'm gonna we're gonna introduce you to the well the founders of Great Pyrenees Rescue of Missouri. So I would like to introduce you to Linda and Ken. Um, hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. Hi, Linda. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hi, Ken. Um, wow, isn't this something? I'm excited. It you is know, very I'm, exciting. I'm, nervous. I'm not going to tell everybody what we did. A minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, so uh, you want to say anything, Linda, about the rescue? Uh, so uh, we started this rescue about uh, two years ago. Um, I always like to tell everybody we started off with uh, one foster and uh, two dogs. So we, we have grown uh, tremendously since then. Um, we have over uh, 15 fosters and, and um, we have a great team of, of transport volunteers. Um, you know, and you know, I like to always say about our rescue too, Steve, is that we're a family. Um, we're not just volunteers, we're, we're an actual family. Um, and I think that sets us aside from a lot of other, um, you know, rescues you do a lot um, of personal interaction with you. absolutely every single day um you know we we know our volunteers well um and and they are family to us uh, very important so you know we always want to thank everybody that that helps us along too without without our volunteers without our donators without our supporters we wouldn't be here um you know so for that we thank you yep wow cool thank you absolutely Linda. So I'm Ken. I'm I'm uh, one of the co-founders. Um, I'm really in the background. I, I have to give a lot of credit to Linda and our team for really growing this um, this rescue. It, as Linda start as stated, you know we started off with uh, one foster and two dogs um, about two years ago, and I think um, the last count um, we've saved nearly 200 dogs in the two years that. Um, we've been operating and again all the the um the work that the volunteers have put into this have um you know been the reason why we've grown so uh so rapidly um but uh, as you can see i'm um linda and i have are in the process of moving to missouri uh linda is uh still in new jersey i'm i'm living in my little trailer out here as our home is being built uh we've we've uh, uh, had quite the adventure making this change and we're very excited uh to see the rescue grow and um i just want to say thank you everyone for your donations uh and your support um so steve back to you uh, hi i'm showing pictures of uh of what's uh well the great pyrenees rescue of missouri's headquarters here in uh, missouri um, yes that's about uh it's about 100 yards away from me i'm, I'm sitting on site uh, watching the construction and hopefully um by the end uh, in about two weeks we should have some walls up some actual walls so um oh wow, that's awesome ken it is very very exciting yes all right um uh, well, hi, Kathy. Uh, Kathy's in Missouri. We have Nancy. Uh, uh, she's representing, uh, well, uh, Great Pyrenees Rescue and Sanctuary in Colorado. They do wonderful things also. So, all right. Well, let's move on with the show. What do you think? Um, I'd like to introduce our first dog with a little video I, I, that we made of him. All right. Um, um, it's it's, it's kind of cool. So, um uh, when um, when the video's over, you get to see him in person.
Hey. There he is. Hey. Here, Simon. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> he's just as good looking there as he is in the video. Yes, he's such a handsome fellow. This is Simon. He's about a year and a half old. Um, he's been with me since February. He does have a knee injury, um, but it doesn't keep him down. He's a very playful, loving, active guy. Um, he gets so excited to play with the ball or go to the dog park. Um, he's great friends with our two cats. He's very good with other dogs. He does jump a little, so maybe not the best for someone with small children, but he's a um, very gentle and sweet boy all around. Is there anything um, else you'd how, like me to how much does he? How much does he weigh? Did you cover that? Um, well, he thinks he's a lap dog, but he's about 75 pounds, and he's pretty tall, too. All right. Um, does he hang his tongue out a lot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> got a great, goofy smile. <laughs> we'll have to start Tongue Out Tuesday contest. All right. Um, I think that picture is just adorable there, the angle of it and everything. Um, now... Um, does he get along with cats? Oh, he loves our cats. They're his best buds. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I, um, there's a picture that we had, and I guess I didn't get it uploaded because um, he was dressed up in uh, a shirt or something. Yes, he was in my uh, partner's button-up shirt. <laughs> Does he <laughs> like playing dressed up? Um, he's pretty relaxed. I don't think he minds it too much. He is okay. a big fan of his bandanas, though. All right. Okay. Uh, so, well, now let me look at the comments. Boy, we have uh, Kimberly saying hi. Um, um, this is pretty cool. Thank everybody for, for watching us today and supporting us. Um, so, with um, um, Mr. Simon, um, uh, the the disadvantages of not having a producer um that's where you go to apply for simon all right now didn't he kind of um doesn't uh isn't there something medical going on here did he hurt his knee or or is that or is that something i remember he does have an acl injury um and he goes in for a surgical consultation in september so currently it's not keeping him down too much but we want to try to avoid it before it comes to the in the future. So he is in need of a medical foster moving forward. Okay. All right. So um, uh, gprescue.com, you can go read all about Simon right there, or you can watch the rerun. All right. Um, uh, how does he do with other dogs, and, uh, and has he been exposed to children? Uh, he does well with other dogs. He loves going to the dog park. He thought that's where we were going today. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. We got some rain, so we didn't make it. Um, and then, as far as children, he is um, very gentle and sweet around them, but he does jump. So he would be better in a home with maybe some older kids that he's not going to push over. That's awesome. Yeah. He doesn't really understand how big he is. <laughs> uh, usually they don't. Um, but uh, yeah, he, uh, that's, a, that's one of the good looking, uh, that's a very good looking boy, okay? It's. Uh, uh, oh, look. Hi, Greg. Um, um, we'll definitely uh, uh, see you next week. So, um, um, Greg's, a, Greg's a good guy. Anyway, um, uh, gprescue.com. Uh, go to the uh, current adoptable dogs, and you can roll. You can, well, that's where all the dogs are, even, but you can scroll down and see Simon's bio there. And, um, um, and, there's all kinds of good stuff that happens there. If it's happening, it's happening at gprescue.com. All right. And um, so, uh, Sam, thank you so much for coming on with uh, Simon, uh, um, especially on our debut show all right, where we're stumbling and bloopering and everything. All right. So maybe we'll make a blooper reel at, the, uh, at some time in the future. All right. Um, um, and I don't see any questions on uh, Simon right now, so we're going to move forward. All right. Thank so you for I'm going to take, take you down to the green room, and you're more than welcome to watch the show from there. 
But if I see him doing something cute, you're coming back up. So so be ready. All right. Okay. Sam, thank you so much, and thank you for fostering. That's that saves lives. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Whoops. Sorry, Ken. All righty. So wow, GPRescue.com. That's where you can go see, uh, read all about Simon, and he needs a medical foster. Okay. Um. Um. So now. We've got a boy that is just, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I would play the video, but the video doesn't do him justice, all right? If his foster mom says, yeah, maybe we will go forward with the video. But everybody, I want you to introduce Hanlon, okay? Probably the most handsome dog in Illinois, don't you think? And Sarah's muted. There we go. Hi, Sarah. Hi guys. Wow, look at this boy. Wowzer. <laughs> what can you tell us about Mr. Hanlon? Hanlon has finally started to come out of his shell with me. Um, I've had him for about a month now. Um, and just this week he decided that he's probably one of the goofiest dogs I've ever met in my entire life. Um, he loves to play with his foster sister um and he just loves to sit on laps and um he's also one of the most intelligent dogs i've ever worked with in my life um so he's just all around a really good dog wow um how old you say he was he's about two or three we're not entirely sure okay all right look at this boy i i, I mean i'll tell you i'm just mesmerized by Sam, by uh Hanlon. I sorry, I almost called him. I almost called him uh, uh, Simon. Um, is it okay if I play that little video that I put together the other day for him? Uh, um, the, the reason I did it is because, well, first of all, he's so handsome, and second of all, one of the pictures I just fixated with. So, mm -hmm. well, here we go. <laughs> Is he really a lap dog? Um, well, I mean, you can tell right now that's where he likes to be. <laughs> wow. Um, He'll come in, in the morning and sit on my whole entire body in the mornings. <laughs> do you have cats? How does he do around cats? Do we know? He, I have three cats, so he um, is exposed to them a lot. He really does um, like the cats, but I think sometimes they think he's a little much because he wants to play with them all the time and um now don't you have a couple other dogs too um yeah i have two other dogs um he is just starting to warm up to the other two um my female and him have been thick as thieves um they um on sunday we had fireworks let lit off and um hanlon went to comfort her because she was so terrified and I mean they've been together ever since then so wow. he's been a good companion for her now, now that thunderstorm was a turning point for him huh yeah okay what what had happened was the thunderstorm hit him and um, uh, Madison who she's talking about um, the slow introductions is a very important just for the breed and he's no different okay and um and 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 madison was having a problem well somebody knew in the hole okay so and then all of a sudden this bad thunderstorm hits and uh the first thing hanlon did was went to comfort her and that was that was a turning point for madison and ever since then uh, uh they're they're really getting tight aren't they all they do is play that's, all they do that is great. That is awesome. So, all right. Wow. 
So gprescue.com, once again, if it's happening, that's where Hanlon's happening. Wow, he's so mellow. Look at this. He's just, he's a really sweet dog. He just. Does he know he's on camera? Is that why he's being so good? Um, this is how he is almost all the time. Okay. Catherine wants to know um, how uh, Hanlon is with kids. Um, Hanlon needs to be placed in a home with older kids. Um, he just. Of his size probably. His size and um, older kids kind of can know how to behave with other dogs. So. Okay. All right. And I'll go with that. And Nancy has a question about his weight. How much does he weigh? Um, he's about 88 pounds right now. Um, we're trying to put some weight on him because he's pretty skinny still. Um, so he's slowly filling out a little bit. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So gprescue.com. Once again, if it's happening, that's where it's happening here. So, wow. And um, uh, he's already got a foster. He doesn't need a foster. He's available for adoption. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, um, he's got, he's just so, he's so doing so well with you. I, I just see it in him. He's so uh, relaxed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, let me check questions once, once again, real quick. And um, let's see. Oh. Uh, um, Catherine wants to know if a Great Pyrenees is a barker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is a barker. Sorry, Catherine. I didn't, it came out wrong. He barks at everything. Okay. All right. So an apartment probably wouldn't be the greatest place for him. No. Okay. <laughs> or he's he's here. <laughs> Looks like he's getting ready to exit stage right. Um <laughs> He's Bye, getting Alan, you have a great day, all right? Uh, um, Sarah, thank you so much for, for coming on with uh, with uh, Hanlon, and thank you so much for fostering him, all right? Chris. Um, uh, Sarah's uh, the, his, first, his first and only foster, and, and any time you get a, a dog that um, um, has run the show his whole life, he can be a handful in the beginning, okay? Is that right? Yeah. Um, I, I saw your smile. <laughs> we we had a difficult time at the beginning, but um, something with him is he does need to be in an experienced dog owner home. Um, this is not a first dog for anybody. As intelligent and as wonderful as he is, he's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, but once you make that connection, once you build that relationship with him, look what you got. Yeah. There, okay. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put that. Yeah, if you work with him, you're going to literally have the best dog that you can ever have. He's... The transformation on him has been amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm very proud of him, and thank you again for fostering him. You saved his life, okay? And that's what fostering does. Is fostering yes. saves lives, and, and, and that's very important, and we always need fostering, okay? So thank you again for uh, coming on, and I'm going to take you down to the green room. And, um, and I'm going to discuss openly uh, uh, with, our, um, with our founder here on who we want to bring up next. Do we want to bring the training up next or do we want to bring the uh, news up next? So um, we're going to find out here in just a second. Thank you very much, um, uh, Sarah, for coming on. You're more than welcome to watch it. If I see something cute out of handling, once again, you're coming back up. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Of course. Okay. All right, Linda, since you got the screen, whoops. So um, I guess we want to, uh, do we want to cover um, uh, Roman to the rescue uh, with our special guest next? Yeah, that would be, that would be great, Steve. Okay. I don't know their schedule. So, um, so we have a segment here and it's going to be amazing. You guys, this is a very awesome part of the show. Okay. So, um, well, without, uh, Anything further, um, let's see if we can get them up here. Hey, wow, you guys. Hi, Roman. 
Hi, Natalie. Hello. Now, we have a um, we have a forum um, with for this segment. As you can see, it's called Roman to the Rescue. All right. We may uh, be changing it around to put Roman and Natalie something or another, but Natalie is from uh, Northwest uh, Guardians. You're the LGD trainer up there, and I believe uh, uh, it goes further than that. And now I'm going to swap around and introduce Roman. And this is uh, behaviorist Roman Gottfried. And um, uh, Roman and Natalie do two different things, actually, is uh, what we're going to find out here. So the we have a question um, that uh, was asked a while back. And um, so... And that actually is related to the uh, working dog. So I'm going to read the question, and we're going to ask Natalie when she unmutes to answer it. And um, um, and here we go. So um, we are about to take on a rescue great peer uh, who we, who we have been told needs a job, but we don't know if uh, if if any livestock protection is. We don't know if he has any livestock protection experience. What steps should we take to introduce him to our farm and other animals so everyone stays safe uh, so he can settle into his new home, um, his new home and his role? I'm most concerned about my five-year-old daughter. Now we have children, okay? Uh, my cats uh, who go outside and the lambs, okay? So they got a lot going on here. Uh, he's 13 months old. He's a youngin', okay? Um my cats who go outside, oh, I'm sorry, I already read that. He hasn't been neutered yet, but uh, he's said to be very gentle. We do plan on having him neutered. Any advice is welcome. We really don't want to start out. We really want to start out right so we can give him a real chance. Thank you. Woof, that's a little thing going on there, huh? Um, yeah, so anytime you're bringing a new dog that's not a baby puppy into a farm situation, I think it's important to just be respectful and understand that that dog has teeth and we need to set them up for success rather than just turning them loose and being like, let's see what happens, right? Um, so what I would recommend for these people, if their intention is for this dog that they're bringing in, uh, this it's, it's still a puppy. He looks like a dog, but he's actually a puppy in his brain. Uh, to set them up for the best success will be controlled interactions involving a short lead, around the livestock, rewarding, calm, balanced behavior. Uh, sniffing is fine, mouthing is not, right? Um, and when there's not an adult human on the other end of that lead, that dog needs to be contained in a safe manner that he cannot escape from and nothing can get into uh, to set it, like a chicken, for example, could fly into a kennel, right? And then set him up for long-term failure with uh, self-rewarding bad behaviors potentially. So um, what I usually recommend is what I call puppy pen, but it doesn't actually have to be for puppies. Um, so a kennel type uh, situation is fine. Chain link can be good. Uh, you just want to know before you set that up if they are a digger or a climber, in which case you do want a floor and a ceiling uh, included. And, um, you know, it's really good to have just a safe area where the dog doesn't feel threatened. They can eat there. They have their own water source. They have a shelter. And then when you bring them out, maybe during barn chores, uh, the livestock are then starting to associate the puppy or the dog in this case with good things happening. So they're getting fed when the dog comes around. Uh, they're getting attention from the humans when the dog comes around. And then the dog goes away and the humans tend to go away as well. Um, it trains the livestock that like, oh, maybe he's not that bad um, and helps build that solid bond as opposed to letting him run amok when you first bring him home. So um, definitely set up a good puppy pen situation for him so he feels safe and they can still nose touch and sniff through the fence, but he doesn't have free reign on his own when he first gets there. And that's something that you'll want to maintain until you think that he's trustworthy. You can move to a longer training lead, but you still want to have control over him with, around the livestock for about the next year at least just to monitor how he does. Um, red flags that you'll see will be, you know, 
uh, pulling wool, especially on the lambs, because uh, some of the lambs will freeze instead of flight. <laughs> um, so you want to just watch those interactions for sure. And just reward him for sitting before you let your five-year-old daughter pet him. Um, as a general rule, if they, set, if they sit down for attention, then they're not going to be jumping on your kids. Um, so that's what I would start with for sure. Wow. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, and now do the uh, experienced dogs play a role in this too? Do they have experienced dogs at this? I mean, question? if they do. Um, yeah. So um, not every dog is a trainer dog, which is a kind of a presumption that I feel like a lot of people make with LGDs. Like, oh, I already have an adult, so I can just throw the puppy out and everything will be fine. Uh, not every adult dog who, even if they are the most bomb proof, perfect working dog, not every dog wants to go train a puppy up. Just like some humans don't actually want to go mentor children, whether they made them or not, right? Um, so it's, it's a different kind of mental state. If you, if you don't know if you have a trainer dog, you need to not put that responsibility on them until you know that they want to take it on. So, um, but if you do have a train, oh, if there's not an LGD, no, you're, it's all on you, babe. <laughs> um. Uh, since this question is kind of old, I had sent her an email last night and let her know this is the uh, she doesn't have another uh, LGD. So, so you you're it <laughs> up to you. Yeah. Um, as long as you just reward calm behavior and redirect the high energy that's going to pop up, um, it, it it should set him on the right path. If he, you know, not every dog wants to work livestock, but if he came from a place that they were like, gosh, he uh, you know, hopefully he just takes a shine to the lambs and wants to be with them. Awesome. Cool. All right. All right. So that's awesome. Thank you for coming on. And uh, that, that was some good insight. Roman, uh, what do you think about that one? That's pretty cool, isn't it? She, uh, she did well. Um, I think Roman may have frozen up here, so we may not have Roman. Um, <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah. Uh oh. Um, uh, well, yeah, there he is. Hi, Roman. Sideways, Roman. Um, uh, he's got uh, apparently has a signal problem. So, anyway, um, um, uh, and Marie says, uh, "Sorry, thank you. I couldn't join her sooner." Marie, this this recording will still be here, okay? And. Um, and you you can go back and uh, and you can watch it after the show's done, All right? So that's how. Uh, um, um, but I'm glad you got my email. So this was good, and I'm sorry it took so long to answer the question, but we got to it, just like I said we would. So, wow, Natalie, this is awesome. I can't thank you enough for this. Uh, uh, we hope you can come back with us, okay? Because um, you're sure, I'd love to. Yeah, your insights, uh, uh, whenever we have, uh, it, uh, because in the rescue, you never know when you're going to get a, a dog that's coming in off of the farm or, or shows tendency of wanting to be on a farm more than wants to sit on a couch, okay? So, um, and, and that's okay. something you also evaluate too, isn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a different level of... <laughs> All right. Looking at a dog, whether they want to be on a couch or in a barn, for sure. Right. Now we have Roman back. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, you My were uh, you were um, in all kind of different positions there for us. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, what did you think? Uh, that was amazing, wasn't it? Well, Natalie, I think um, she's spot on on pretty much everything. Um, the only thing that I don't like is that she's so far away in Montana, so we cannot hang out having coffee talking about <laughs> dogs. <laughs> um, don't you on Saturday mornings have a show called Coffee with uh, the, the Trainer or Behaviors or something? Yes, I have, I have a show every Saturday um, calling in behaviorists or talking about different subjects. Today we had the subject about how shame affects dog behavior and our you know, dog training. Wow. So... Um, we, we talk pretty much everything. It's it's not about just click and train. It's not just about positive reinforcement. It's about, in general, how to handle our personal stuff and how it affects our dogs. Because 
we we are our dog's um, parents, no matter how we want to see it. And dogs look up to us for information and knowledge. And if, if we don't have our shit together, <laughs> yeah. they will figure it out. <laughs> they take advantage of it. All right. We do have a question for you, Roman. Yes. And um, and this came in actually from, uh, well, the Colorado Rescue. Um, they have Bixby there. And uh, he came from, believe it or not, New York. Hmm. And, uh, <laughs> Downtown. <laughs> um, they're having a problem with him greeting strangers, all right? Um, um, and uh, he, uh, they, they want to know uh, some alternatives uh, to introductions. He, um, he's not, uh, not doing well when he meets new people. And he's in their facility in uh, Peyton, Colorado. And, okay. Uh, um, which is um, kind of a, like, would be a, uh, it, it's a kennel, but they live on site and they're down there all the time. Right. Okay. So. So first of all, we have, I don't know any, you know, history of the dog. You know, dog's behavior um, or dog's personality is, let's call it 42% genetics, but the rest is environmental factors. So if a dog comes in from a rescue and we don't know really the story, there are all these different stories. The adopter has a story, the foster has a story, the rescue has a story, and then we have the dog story. Only he knows what he had went through. Um, when he comes in a facility, it's very difficult for us to recognize how exactly that dog will behave in the future. So we have dogs who have pessimists and other dogs who are optimists. So we want to make sure that we do first evaluation. Before we do the evaluation, the dog has to create a bond. Now we have to recognize that guardian breeds are not like any other breed. Their, their main genetic is to bond with the family. They are the family and the family are them. It's kind of like a weird situation. Only guardian breeds have that. So he's nothing without the family and he is a lot with the family. So if a dog comes into a new place, he lost his previous family, now he's in a new family, and there's a lot of confusion and misconception of what it is. Everybody in that place that is not considered family is a stranger. And family consists of building at least with someone a secure attachment relationship. Imagine you're going, being abducted by aliens. Who do you trust? You don't trust anyone except of the one who gives you options, gives you solutions, guides you through the process, makes you feel safe, gives you a room, gives you clothes, gives you food, doesn't ask a lot of questions, just makes you feel comfortable. Um, alien is a bad example, but for the dogs, we are different species. And just because we don't have a tail and we don't like bark like them, it doesn't, we are not considered dogs. So there's not such thing as pack leader. It doesn't make any biological sense. We are adopted parents and the dog sees us as such. And if you don't build that relationship, the dog would not have that. Um, because this is a great information. Um, we're going to talk about that in a, in, a, in a second. So once the dog builds a secure attachment relationships and wolves and Siberia Huskies and wolves have the same concept, especially wolves. And we, we I don't make assumptions because of wolf therefore dog okay they're they're species that are at least four million generations apart four million generations apart in evolution dogs are more likely to behave like human families than they do like dog families uh, like wolf families however even if we have a mixed dog that comes in mixed as a wolf breed as a hybrid we have all this conflict of breeds coming in on one space so the dog is in confusion which breed comes in, in according to each individual triggers in the environment so if a dog doesn't have a reference who should he trust each breed trait would come up according to the situation so if a dog is being triggered in a complex life-threatening situation likely the wolf trait will come out survival response in freeze fight or flight but a pet should not do that. A pet, a pet who is being in general generations in a home environment, he knows, hey, I can flirt with the problem and I can ask for help in an other species than mine. And that's happening because people reinforce dog in, in the revolution to seek out for help, to stay with people who are not the same species as they are. And therefore we want to trigger that dog evolutionary code that is already in the husky and in the regular Pyrenees, but it's not included in, in the wolf 
he has to learn that. And it's not something that comes in just only with genetics. It's also experience. If a dog doesn't see human nerves in a value, why would he reach out for help? And that's why the first week, the first four weeks are very important to the bonding. So the dog and the wolf recognize that this person is a value. I'm not messing around with them. And if you have a problem, I reach out to that. And that's why the dog has a hard time with meeting strangers, because you are a stranger too. But it trusts you more than the other stranger. And if a dog doesn't have an understanding what what the prediction would be of the event and he cannot refer to you for information that he has to deal with in so his wolf come out if that is really the case that he's a wolf right. so we have to start from scratch and trigger the family dog the family canid in the wolf and the family canid in the ca in a in a um pet and in a dog and in a husky and recognizing that hey i'm here to help you i walk you through the process i have empathy i have sympathy i i show you there's no way to fail i'm going to give you success however wolves in indifference to dogs they take very hard on justice so if wolf sees justice different than a dog if a dog doesn't get his role and, and, and an event doesn't go as planned, he's not so harsh judging the situation like a wolf would do. And we have scientific evidence that a wolf that doesn't see justice happening, he takes justice in his own teeth and takes care of it. Which means if you introduce a person and the person doesn't comply according to the wolf hybrid justice system, then the person is being blamed for it and is being corrected by attack. So back to square one if you don't build secure attachment relationship introducing strangers is not going to end up well maybe it does but likely not because he's got to trust whoever's handling him to if the stranger wants to bite you don't want to trigger the survival response right because that would split the dog into a wolf hybrid or a dog <laughs> you know? right. so the uh the suspected uh mixture of wolf and husky does play a role in this then is that right of course it does okay now imagine we're... i grew up with parents who are police officers and the other part of my parents are fire people right who am i i will try to recreate who i see as idolize it so if i idolize my father who is a police officer or that is my mother who is a fire works in the fire department um i am split which way do i go do i feel justice or do i help people Okay. And that's the conflict. Right. Now, I've, I've been asked before, and since we're talking about a mix, and we have to move on here in a second, um, I've been asked if they're mixed with, say, a golden retriever, does that change the dog? Yes, of course it does, because you have a guardian breed and a hunting dog. A hunting dog is more likely to play around and feel triggered by changes, approaching, appearing, disappearing, right? A guardian breed, everything that comes in is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> so we have conflicts here. and the dog if it doesn't have morals and ethics in place his breed traits will go to the extreme either or either he ignores it or he attacks it either he guards it or he he's going to kill it okay so from that perspective if we don't have set morals and ethics can you can do that only if you create a secure attachment relationship so the dog listens to your morals and ethic codes it's going to fail yeah i agree all right roman thank you and um, um, Nancy and uh, Judy, I, I hope uh, that helps you out. Um, Natalie, do you, would you like to add anything to this? Oh, sure. Um, I just will throw out a plug that if your Great Pyrenees is mixed with anything other than a livestock guardian dog breed, please don't throw it out unattended with livestock. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> and now all right. I like that. Wow, so there you have it. Uh, um, uh, we've got um, and I and I actually uh, messed up. I've been scrolling um, uh, Roman's uh, website, but uh, we, oh, I've been I was scrolling Natalie's too. Natalie's is livestockguardians.net. She actually has a school there, right, Natalie? And I know you're yeah. Meeting. Yeah, I do LGD online, which is, it's more for first time uh, working LGD owners to just kind of have a consistent place to go with information that's based on the last decade plus of my life working with these dogs. Um, 
and I know like everything is Googleable, but Google isn't infallible, and you'll get 18 versions of what you should do in any given situation. And awesome. what I found is that's a recipe for confusion for you and your dog. So, <laughs> um, now, now your school is virtual. Is that correct? Yep, yeah, it's all okay. online, and so anybody can do it. Yeah. So see, virtual stuff does work, right? With support. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, yeah. you know, I, I do my best to make it cover what you need. But if you have extra needs, you obviously can reach out and I will help you instead of commenting on a Facebook post and then abandon you. <laughs> right. Which happens. Well, it's often it's awful hard to, to train a dog to work with a dog behind a keyboard, too. So, yeah, I train. Pe I say I train people to train. Right. Their dogs. Right. I don't train the dog so. remotely. It's just not functional. That's correct. Thank you, guys. Roman, thank you. Natalie, thank you. Uh, I don't know your schedule, Roman. Um, um, I don't know if you have to fly or not because this is a, 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 a time that uh, you said that you were pretty good. So, um, um, uh, I blocked it out already for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We've got a new. Are you, you guys want to stay up here? Or you want to go back down to the green room? I don't really know. No, we're here. Okay, Natalie. And, uh, uh, but now, if uh, if we get a signal issue, I'm gonna have to take you down, okay? Because that that will um, relieve that. Now we have another segment, and um, and uh, uh, once again we did a um, a little bitty uh, intro to it, and um, well, here we go. Well, now. Everybody, I would like to introduce you to the director of Great Pyrenees Rescue of Missouri. This is Reagan. Hi, Reagan. Hi, Steve. Hello, everyone. Wow. Boy, what a show, huh? What do you think so far? Great show. Okay, good. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So what's our news all? Uh, what do you got going on in the news? Well, what we've got going on, Steve, we have had requests for T-shirts. So we have oh. time. Hey, so here we go. Ah, here we go. There it is. There is our rescue color theme that we love with our logo. And we have shirts available in five colors. I like that color, too. Yeah. Oh, look at that red. I like that red. Um, somebody tipped me off to that one. <laughs> it would look good on you, Steve. And then the people that like to wear black around their Great Pyrenees, there's your shirt right there. Yes, I'm wearing black and I'm sure I'm covered in white hair. All right. Then naturally they had to have this one because this is actually the colors of the rescue. Right. So. And they are available in uh, adult sizes, small through 4XL. And we also have youth sizes. And where do you go get them? Well, there's a link on our Facebook page. And uh, they are $20. Proceeds go towards helping Pyrenees in need. So right where they're, you're watching the show, that's where the link is, right? That's where the link is. And we are uh, trying to reach our goal of 50 shirts sold. And I think we're not quite halfway there. All right. I have to bring this one up here. Uh, Catherine says Natalie and Roman are awesome. Thanks. So, um, anyway. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Okay. So, uh, in other news, we are in desperate need of fosters. Um, we have about 30 dogs in rescue right now. At any given time, we have between 30 and 50 dogs. Um, and we have emails, calls, um, we get text messages, um, messages from shelters to take shelter dogs. We're just bombarded with owner surrenders, people needing to surrender their dogs, and we have nowhere for them to go um, until we have a foster home available. Wow. And right there is where you go, chiefyrescue.com forward slash foster. You can apply to foster there. Um, we have over 10 dogs on our waiting list right now to come in. 
and the foster requirements are you need a visible fence in most cases unless it's a dog um, we will check your vet reference you need a good vet history and you need to be able to pass a home check wow all right now that waiting list you're talking about yes um uh, holy cow 10 dogs on it uh um uh, I believe this is one of the dogs on the waiting list, isn't it? She is uh, waiting to come in. Um, we do actually have a foster for her, um, but we also are in need of donations so that we can vet all of these new dogs waiting to come in. Um, this is Shiloh, and she is five years old. She's a beautiful girl. You can see her personality there. Hey. What about this one? That is uh, Tasha. She is three years old, and uh, one of her owners just passed away. The husband passed away, and he was, uh, she was his dog. And the wife is now having to move in with family, and she cannot take Tasha with her. Wow. Boy, that's something. She's missing her owner. Now... Now you had mentioned donate, okay, and yes. uh, and I want to put this up there. Um, uh, uh, what are some of the different ways that uh, that they can donate? So there's the link to donate there. It's also on our website. Um, we need monetary donations for vet care, dog food, anything involved with taking care of the dogs. Their monthly preventatives. Um, some need neutered or spayed when they come into rescue. Some have never had vaccines. We need uh, leashes and collars. We use a lot of martingale collars. When we uh, send our dogs on transport, we want them to be safe and secure, so we use those collars. Um, Don't you have a wish list somewhere? We do have a wish list, Steve. It is on our website. There are links to our Amazon wish list and our Chewy wish list. Right. And um, um, so, how do they go about donating off the wish list? So, there are items on there that we've picked out that we use regularly. Um, there's some toys on there, too, and bones that our dogs we know they like. Um, and uh, dog food. The dog food, yes. Um, we go through a lot of dog food with so many dogs, but we do have fosters in different locations. So if you'd like to donate something, please send us a message and we can send you the correct shipping address. Okay. So that is perfect because dog food and preventatives are the rescue's highest expenditures, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Now, what about Amazon Smile? Is that another way to donate if they set up uh, Great Pyrenees Rescue of Missouri for Amazon Smile? Yes, that that yeah. would be great. That would be yeah. helpful. So, all right. Now, do you have any other news for us? Well, I just want to thank all of our donors, our transporters, our volunteers for everything that they do for us. We couldn't do what we do without you. So, thank you. Wow, and thank you, Reagan, because you're right there too. So, thanks, Steve. Now, yeah, now we've got something else here that we've got going on, and uh, thank you, Reagan. You want you, you want to wait up here? You are you busy? You got to go down to the green room. That's up to you. Uh, I can wait here. Okay, so I want to get, uh, um, and I forgot to announce this earlier. Reagan mentioned um, um, uh, she mentioned uh, Martin Gill collars. Okay, so. Now we're going to do something here, and um, if we're going to, we're going to. How about we give one away? What do you think? So if you type in hashtag GPRM into the comment section, you just might win. That we'll have a drawing at the end of the show here. You got about seven minutes, and if you just type in hashtag GPRM. And if you're, and you'll see the, you'll see the drawing. And if you win, we will send you this 
black martingale collar. Sorry, you can't pick colors. All right. But um, so type in hashtag GPRM into the comments and and our little tool here will pick it up. If you enter twice, you can only enter once. The tool will knock out your second entry. All right. Sorry. So so type it in and then uh, um, uh, we'll have the drawing at the end of the show. So um, and we're getting there. All right. So anyway, so back to the show now. Um, uh, this is our first show. And the first of uh, of, a, of a very good relationship that we're going to develop with a lot of people, I hope. Okay. And um, um, uh, there's a side note on in the comments for Natalie. It looks like, and or, or Roman. I didn't. It scrolled up too fast. We're getting uh, we're getting some good entrance here. So this is good. So um, so Steve, I want to jump in here real quick. So Marie um, has a question, um, and okay. that may be the one that scrolled past you. Um, it's in the notes. I'll try to read it. Uh, it says my peer has been home here for eight days now. He's setting in very well, good with my cats and kids. If anything, he's too friendly with everyone who comes over. Once he knows this is his home, he is likely to be more protective. He doesn't bark when cars come up the long driveway. Can that be trained? He does get protective when he hears coyotes. I believe. That's Roman. Yes, but it has some limitation because it needs a lot of preparation. It needs a good bonding. It needs a structure. We, we need to understand that a dog's behavior is, is a dog's emotion associated. So the dog feels a certain way to respond a certain way. And if we don't help the dog feel a certain way, we will not be achieving our goals. So is it trainable? Yes. Is it easy? No. Um, we, we need to consider a lot of factors into that. So, yeah, if, if, if they need help doing that, I'm sure um, Natalie and I can... Natalie, right? Natalie, yes. Yeah. Natalie. Natalie and I can definitely help you guys go through that. Um, success rate, I would say 80%. Um, what one mistake that people likely do is trying to train the dog while the event is happening. In other words, you try to swim while somebody throw you in the middle of the ocean and if with no harbor and no ship inside, you're gonna panic. So you're gonna to have to prepare your dog in the house, teaching your dog certain concepts and ideas and those ideas then generalizing and then having those generalized ideas then applying to the triggers the dog will have. So he has already solutions in place before he gets into this over threshold. Yes, thank you, Roman. That uh, thank you, Ken. I um, I missed that one. Sorry, and I couldn't put it up on the comments. It was too long. Um, so, Is Marie the one that asked the question about the working? No. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let's see here. Was that the same? Uh, yeah, that was Marie. Yes. Okay, uh, so I would encourage her to pick a lane. You yeah. can you can have a house peer who guards your family and your house primarily, or you can have a working peer out with the livestock, but if you bounce him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it's going to confuse him. And um, when you confuse the dogs, they don't know what's expected of them, and they, they can't succeed in an environment when they have no idea what you want from them. Right. So um, just throwing that out there. Okay. <laughs> So it does look like Marie did get the dog that was in the question. So this is a good thing. All right. So, all right. And I didn't realize it was, uh, it was Marie. So sorry about that. Um, anyway. Okay. So, um, we've got, I'm, I'm going to interrupt one more time, Steve, because I can. <laughs> I know you. Um, so Roman, Roman also had a comment, a, a very generous offer that, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Roman, but you're willing to, raffle off an online session with you is that correct yeah i did like the black collar so i said you know what let's add something to it very nice very nice wow. thank you wow i missed that one. Oh, look at that um thanks for that roman thank you, thank roman. you. that's amazing and uh, R roman does a lot of work with different rescues and um, um uh, but he you know this is his living also so so anyway um all right, so 
it's getting close to three o'clock and we don't want everybody to flee if we do the drawing at 301 so i think we're getting close to getting ready to do the drawing here all right um hash, uh, last second here get in uh hashtag gprm post it to the comments and uh our little tool will pick it up and uh and you have a chance to win uh, uh the martin gill collar and those of you that knows what they are uh uh, you already know, but for those of you that don't, uh, uh, when a Great Pyrenees uh, hitched brakes and puts it in reverse, mm -hmm. those of you that are experienced knows exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you that aren't, they can slip out of a standard collar and they're gone. Okay, so um, the Martinville collar is a very uh, a very good addition to the uh, to the Great Pyrenees, uh, um, especially if you walk them on their collar. Okay, you know with the leash. So, um, we're going to start the uh, drawing here. Let, let me pull the um, hashtag down here real quick. And um, You have to draw two hashtags, right? You have two winners. Um, you have the winner, and then you have the winner winner. Right. I don't know. How about, let's see. I don't know. Um, how about we just include it with the Martingale? Okay. That's Unless smart. you want to have a second drawing, I don't have time. Two drawings. All right. After this drawing, um, we will do a second one, and I'll we'll set up a hashtag and or something. How right? about that? I double the price. You add a donation, you get a you get a session. Donation oh. over hundred dollars gets you a training session. Well, there you go. That's something Linda will be able to uh, let people know. Hundred dollar donation gets a free training session with Roman. Sorry for that. <laughs> instead of the uh, instead of the drawing, because I wasn't. You know, ready. because you know, it's all it's all linked together. If the rescue has funds to support the rescue itself, then more decks can be rescued, and one adopter opens two spaces, two rescues with one adopter, because he opens a space for another dog to be rescued while he's working on a dog. So we yeah. cannot ignore that. Right. So there you have it. If you make a hundred dollar donation to Great Pyrenees Rescue of Missouri then Linda will uh, set it up with a session with Roman for free. Thank you, Roman. Okay, well, let's do the drawing. Check this out, everybody. So you get to see the drawing. And uh, here we go. There you go. Look at that, Leslie. <laughs> All right. Leslie, Yay. if you send me an email with your uh, shipping information to Steve at gprescue.com, we will get your collar out right away, right away. And by the way, let me know how big your dog is because this, uh, this particular one um, uh, fits the next size of, uh, but I can't remember the next size on it. There's a dimension on Here it is right here. Uh, 11 inches to 15 inches. But if you've got one... Uh, where it's bigger than that, the 13 to 20, there's two different sizes. So uh, so let me know which one would fit, um, 11 to 15 or 13 inches to 20 inches. And you measure your dogs around the neck, okay? So there we go. How about that? Well, before we close, Steve, I'd like to thank you um, for your efforts. Um, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes here, and state, Steve has... Um, been gracious and and work has worked hard on this uh, i'd like to i'd like to also thank everyone who has joined uh, uh our special guest natalie roman um i really appreciate everything that everyone puts into this rescue and with that um i'll uh we can close thank you hi and we have uh uh what a great day guys you, you guys really uh uh, thank you, and we had a lot of good interaction here, and this was our debut. So next week at 1 o'clock Central, oh, I got to add Noon Mountain, and if you're on Eastern Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to do this every Saturday, and you're going to get to meet uh, new dogs every week. And uh, we're working hard with uh, the uh, great uh, uh, Pure Rescue and Sanctuary in Colorado. We're trying to get them on. To, uh, we can show off one of their dogs. And this is what we like to do is show them off, okay? 
look at Hanlon, look at Simon, that they were they were great, weren't they? And yes. um, um, and uh, and we thank Sam and uh, and Sarah for for bringing uh, Hanlon and Simon on and uh, going through this and and so now we know what to expect and we're on overtime and we mm -hmm. can't afford those zeros at the end of no paycheck. So, all right, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, we Steve. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Everybody next week.